Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from Crypto Busy. My name is Tom, and in today's video, I'll be going over Bitcoin dominance. It's not necessarily the best thing in the world. But before I jump into the video itself, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Crypto Busy, where we keep you guys up to date whenever we post a new video, uh, and also some extra content on there as well. We also have two telegrams, Crypto Busy T and Crypto Busy TG, so make sure you check those out. And we also have a Patreon as well, Crypto Busy. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So, uh, Bitcoin dominance, I want to talk about that today because, um, as you've probably seen in the market, it's gone on another day of a surge. Uh, it's around 6,000, I'll, I'll get to the price in a minute, but it's, I think it's around 6,000 something, 5,000 up, up to the high 5,000s. But the Bitcoin dominance itself is 58.3%. Now, okay, this is a good thing and it's a bad thing. I think the good thing is, is that we've seen these sort of dominances of Bitcoin, uh, if you can put it that way, uh, before a bull run. Uh, where Bitcoin did did its own thing before the rest of the market followed, and then Bitcoin uh, dropped, and then the rest of the market followed. Um, you can look at the uh, the prices and how they differed. Um, but fifty eight point three percent. That's you know, that's nearly getting up to two thirds. Nearly it would be sixty six percent if it was two thirds. Um, thank you for my quick maths there. But uh, you know, it's getting up to two thirds of the dominance of the market, and that is a uh, it's quite a serious thing if we get into those sort of territories. Um, because you can't just have all the money in one asset. There's just so many other uh, cryptocurrencies out there that offer much better things than what Bitcoin can do as itself, right? Bitcoin is a very good store of value, and it's good for that, um, but a dominance of 58.3% uh, is not necessarily a good thing. Um, it, well, it's, it's two things. It's a good thing because it might signal a bull run, uh, but it's a bad thing because you, know, you just don't want to have that sort of dominance in the market in just one coin. I think many people would be annoyed if Ethereum was, you know, 58% uh, dominance, but this is not really the sort of video for uh, uh, Bitcoin maximalists or anything like that. Because um, you look at the rest of the market today, you look at, let's just say, take the top five. Let's just say, the take the top five. Bitcoin is, actually, take the top 10. Even the top, probably the top 20. Yeah, the top 20. It's, it's uh, you know, it's it's the change in 24 hours. It's the highest it's been. But you look at anyone else as their true chain, basic attention, they, they, you know, there's probably something's happened there. Um, but you can see that, you know, most of the attention is going towards Bitcoin. Uh, I've, I've got an article in a second about that. But yeah, you can see it's $6,374, which is a good thing. It's nice to see that those prices again uh, and the interest in the market again. I'm just worried that we might have jumped the gun too early if we are in a true bull run. Uh, I don't think we are just yet. Um, I mean, you know, we may have to see, I want to see five figures first and then that will confirm to me. Yes. Okay. We're definitely in a, in a bull run here because you know, it is interesting times and people are losing intent, uh, you know, losing interest and gaining interest. And so that's sort of that, that flip of people losing interest and gaining interest. Uh, I've talked about it in some of my previous videos. So I've got a, uh, uh, um, an article here uh, explaining why Bitcoin is surging. Here are four possible explanations. Uh, so the digital, the digital currency is back on the rise. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> we just had a um, bear market for about a year and a bit, really. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't heard, Bitcoin is back. Well, I hope so. <laughs> oh, it's got a live article which changes in time. Well, the, the main reasons is technically driven. It could be technically driven. So, um, you know, they're going through some psychological barriers of $4,000 and $5,000. And now it's just past $6,000. And it's, you know, finding that $6,500, that's the next um, you know, resistance. Uh, and then finding support around areas. You know, I think they're finding a support definitely around 5,000, you know, the 5,000 mark. So, you know, there, there is some technical dri uh, driven behind this. Um, I have seen some people on Twitter and Instagram talk about uh, it going back down, Bitcoin itself going back down to uh, $2,000, maybe $1,500. Um, and then that would be it, you know, in terms of just bottoming out of the market. Um, that may happen. You know, it, it can go either way at this point. It could go completely upwards or it can com go completely downwards for a bit and then uh, pick itself back up again. Because... You know, there are people out there who are very big key players, you know, who have, you know, the large sums of money out there uh, who want to find a good price to invest at. And if they find that, you know, 6000 is not the right price, they'll wait for it to go back down to 2000 or even $1,000. So, um, you know, the $4,000, $5,000 mark, you know, the good psychological levels uh, for uh, support. Um, but they're technically driven. That could be one of the uh, one of the points there. Uh, and then there's a 
Well, there's a, a diagram here talking about the uh, the support and the resistances of Bitcoin over, I think, over the years, really. Um, so you can see using, uh, uh, you know, you've got the 200 week uh, smoothed moving average. You can see that this is, you know, sort of a, a sort of general form upwards. And there was that bull run back in 2017 and how it went completely away from that support. But, you know, it is what it is. And that's someone's interpretation of what the market is at the moment. But there you go. That's one. That's one interpretation. The next one is the adoption argument. So arguably Bitcoin's biggest battle is getting people to use it. So, OK, uh, the adoption argument. You know, many people are talking about, you know, when are we going, you know, we accept Bitcoin and, and all that. Well, I think, you know, in some cases, the way I see it is that, you know, you, it's, it's imagine you go into a store and they say uh, we accept gold as payment. Well, OK, cool. I don't have any gold on me, um, but, you know, there's that. I could see it in, you know, large transactions, like if you wanted to buy a car or if you wanted to buy a house and, you know, you could use Bitcoin for that. That could be a, a, a feasible way of doing that. Um, and hopefully as well, uh, with the legalities behind that, uh, that may become a reality. I think, I think some people are already doing that already with buying uh, cars and houses and assets like that uh, by using Bitcoin. Um, but there you go. It, is sentiment shif uh, shifting? Uh, so Bitcoin for the first time in a while is shrugging off bad news. Yeah, because this Binance, um, yeah, the fact that Binance news was shrugged off was telling. You know, um, you know, I, I had people contacting me and I saw people on, you know, uh, Twitter and Instagram talking about it for about a day. And then that was it, really. I mean, we haven't really talked about it in quite some time. I know it happened a few days ago only, but, um, you know, it was quite a significant thing. 40 million, were, um, you know, dollars worth of bitcoin was stolen and you know nobody really bat an eye i mean yes it was interesting news for a day you got justin sun saying yeah i'll, I'll, I'll chuck over uh 40 million dollars worth of of tether um but yeah it didn't really um you know rock the boat as, as many people thought it would have done so that's a very good thing that's a that's also a good point there is that you know people are saying well okay that, that is one of the cases. We'll look into the security behind it and some of the um, the legalities behind that uh, and, and see what we can do moving forward. But yeah, so that, that's one of the main things there is that, that, you know, $40 million worth of Bitcoin and not many people are up in arms about it. I think it's because they've had a good response to it. I think Binance have had a good response to it, um, you know, to that hack saying that you will, will suspend uh, withdrawals and um, deposits and all that sort of stuff. So they've, they've had a good response to it as well. So there's that. And then I think the last point here, I think that is, I think that's the last point there. Yeah, about the, uh, well, okay, are people actually dropping gold? Um, well, I'll leave this link, uh, I'll leave this article linked in the description below so you can read it for yourselves. Um, but yes, okay, so uh, Bitcoin itself, it's a new asset, you know, um, it's, it's completely different to, um, you know, gold, so the precious metals or a real estate investment. Uh, or stocks and, and, and shares. So, um, yeah, it, it, are people actually dropping gold? Well, you know, there there is that uh, sort of opinion that uh, in the next financial crash, um, you know, the sort of the precious metals will go up in prices. As you could tell from the, well, from 2008, you know, the price of gold is quite high. Actually, just let me just check for a second. You know, the sort of the theory for the moment is that, um, you know, in the next financial crash, most of the money or some of the money will go into um, cryptocurrencies themselves uh, because it's a, it's a form of, uh, you know, a store of value, really. Um, so let me just have a look at the price of gold here. And I'm just going to go to the months, actually. Uh, and you can see back in 2011, 2003. Yeah, so 2008, it, was, it only went upwards in 2008. It never went down, really. Um, so I think if I can find a chart of gold, in 2008 I'll, I'll find it but the only way it went up the only way it went, the only way it went gold itself was up during 2008 and 2009 uh, and then also after um the, uh, the the crash itself so in 2011 it went up to its highest so you know for gold itself to go to the completely opposite direction of all the sto um, stocks and shares um what well, you know is an interesting indicator for where gold um and also cryptocurrencies themselves and so um the big sign to look out for uh, in the next uh, financial crash. You know, I know not many people want to talk about that because it's sort of you know um, negative news, but uh, it you know eventually it is going to happen one day. There is there is it's inevitable. You know we live in the boom and bust economy, and we've had a bit of a boom. 
not so much. Uh, I'd, I'd argue that you know that we haven't had much of that boom uh, of um, of you know of that financial era uh, in the past ten years. And you know some people would argue that we are overdue uh, a financial crash. And so what would happen to these all of these? You know, look at you know the top ten, the top one hundred cryptocurrencies. Is the money going to go into these uh, projects? Are they going to go into these cryptocurrencies? And so I'll leave you with that question there. Uh, the last article I have with you today is the signs uh, that XRP is about to blow up. And I've just, there we go. I've got it highlighted at the bottom here. Uh, another interesting development is that what happened last month when the EU Commission announced that the launch of the Association of Blockchain Applications, which Ripple is a part of. So that's good news there. Uh, I'll leave that link in the, in the description below. So um, that also shows that with Ripple, um, you know, they're, 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 they want to cooperate with uh, the banks and the institutions themselves. And I think, you know, for uh, a cryptocurrency or a crypto assets like, uh, like XRP, uh, it's very good to see them uh, cooperating with those places um, because, you know, they must know something else than, 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 than what we <laughs> the sort of normal people know. Um, you know, they, 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 there's always going to be talks behind closed doors uh, about what's happening from one country to another, from one financial institution to another. So um, for XRP uh, in the next you know few years or so, it's very interesting to see where it's going to go and what they're doing uh, and to see it going live and uh, it's seeing you know other people testing it so i'll leave that thought there with you and sort of the idea of the financial crash and where's it where's it going to go um you know where where is the money really going to go is it going to go back into gold and the precious metals or is it going to go back into gold and also the cryptocurrencies as well so i'll leave that question with you let me know what you think in the comments below about the video um i'll be very interested to hear what you guys say i'll be in the comments section below to to answer any questions that you may have and um yeah so don't forget to follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at critterbusy where we keep you guys up to date whenever we post a new video or also some extra content on there as well uh, also, we do have uh, two telegrams, CryptoBizyT and CryptoBizyTG, so make sure you check that out. And also, we have a Patreon, CryptoBizy, so make sure to check that out as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.